Hi Techies, I'm Professor Tech and this week we're repenting for our technical sins and resolving some of our emotions around the ASUS ROG Ally. After several more months, a variety of updates and a different perspective, let's see how my opinion on the Ally has changed, how I'm using it, and whether or not I can recommend it to new users. So get locked in because my comment section is about to eat me alive. So back in November and December of 2023, I created a series of videos talking about whether I preferred the Steam Deck over the Asus ROG Ally, and then made a counter-argument video defending the Ally over the Steam Deck. The point of those videos were to demonstrate the strengths and weaknesses of each device when compared to each other. And honestly, I wanted to see how many people actually noticed I made a video from both perspectives. Some of the comments were kind of hilarious, and if you'd like to check those videos out and read how unaware some of the comments were, you can click right up here. Don't be mean, it's it's just funny. But it's no secret that I am a die-hard Steam Deck fanboy, and frankly, for good reason. The Steam Deck reinvigorated my desire to make videos, and those videos led to some pretty great channel growth in the last year that I'm immensely grateful for. So admittedly, I am very biased when it comes to the RG Ally because I was convinced there was no way it could be better than the Steam Deck. And for a time, I would argue still that I was right. Windows on portable handhelds was, and to a degree still is, not a great experience. Think of all the issues you run into on a daily basis with your work laptop or personal device when it comes to updates and drivers and the like, and then imagine navigating that using only a controller interface. Obviously, you can plug a keyboard and a mouse into the device, but to a degree, that kind of defeats the large amount of the point of having a portable handheld PC. However, since then, the experience has tremendously improved and my perspective on the device has changed to the benefit of it. So in an effort to keep this video organized, here is how I will break it down. How has the Windows and Armory Crate experience improved. What's new in Armory Crate? What games am I using the device for now that I understand its strengths? And what type of gamer should choose the ROG Ally over the Steam Deck? And lastly, do I even recommend the ROG Ally now? So let's jump right into it. As previously mentioned, the Windows experience on the ROG Ally when I first got it was not great. Constant bugs, system pop-ups, configuration changes that I didn't make works. There were times it felt so unusable that I would just sit on a plane in silence rather than try and sort out what could have been simple fixes. But I'm very happy to report that for the most part, most of these issues seem to have been resolved. I'm currently running Windows 11 on my Ally, and since I started using it again a few weeks ago, I haven't had any major hiccups outside of regular update that are no longer forced to the device, at least from what I noticed, and I haven't had to reinstall any drivers or system files. Armory Crate seems to run a bit smoother than it did in the past, and well, the keyboard recall for when I need to type something is much snappier and doesn't lag when I'm typing. Thank God. And a note on the keyboard, I previously had an issue where I set the keyboard to split and separate to make it easier for my thumbs to reach the whole keyboard as it would sometimes revert back to the original keyboard and I would have to reset it yet again to make it more usable in a confined space like a plane or the backseat of a car. But since turning the console on a few weeks ago, I haven't had to do that once. So a point for doing what should have been done in the beginning I guess. I also noticed a much shorter launch time for Windows. While it was by no means slow before, I have noticed a significant speed increase. And because I know someone may say I upgraded the hardware, I actually reinserted my original hard drive from the unit into the system before I shelved it back in early January. So what I presume is software fixes and optimization seems like a much better start time. And the last little bit for this section is that I've noticed the touchscreen in general, not just the keyboard and mouse, is more responsive than what I remember. When entering my passcode to get into the console upon boot, there was no slight delay that I could remember and it would always throw off my inputs and cause me to have to put in my password again in the past. Clicking on items in the toolbar, widgets, and taskbar are responsive and smooth. And there seems to be a better palm rejection when I accidentally multi-touch the screen, which has led to much less frustration on my end. And speaking of less frustration, have you ever thought, why the f is my wireless bill so f***ing high? Why am I paying all that money for speed, coverage, data, 5G, unlimited talk and text, and mobile hotspot when I could be using today's channel partner, Mint Mobile? Mint Mobile offers all these features for as low as $15 per month. How the f*** do they do it? Simple, by cutting out the retail storefronts and salesperson markups, they're able to keep costs low and sell directly to you online and they're built on the nation's largest 5G network. So why should you pay more than you have been for access to the same 
network. I've been using Mint for over four years and even before this partnership with them, I was trying to get friends and families to switch because of just how much I save every single year and because of how flexible they are with the phones that you can bring over. Right now, new customers can get any plan for $15 per month when they purchase three months or more and this even includes the unlimited plans. Big Wireless wants you to think, oh, they'll never switch, it's far too hard. But with Mint Mobile and eSIM cards, which most phones have now that you can use to switch and sign up and activate within 15 minutes right on your phone, and if you don't have eSIM, Mint will ship you a SIM card for free. So once again, try mintmobile.com forward slash tech or click the link in the description. It helps me a ton and saves you money so that you can spend it on more handhelds and video games. Thank you, Mint Mobile. And now let's talk about how much better Asus Armory Crate has become since we last spoke. Armory Crate SE, for all that it's worth, did not have a good launch. Virtually every review outlet that covered the ASUS RG Ally commented on how broken the Armory Crate experience was, from not recognizing game launches properly to not removing titles that had been uninstalled, to just not launching sometimes, causing the physical buttons and interface to just not work. It received a massive amount of negative criticism, and rightfully so. But time has a way of healing everything. And now when using Armory Crate, it is a much smoother experience and I haven't seen as many hookups when swapping between menus or launching games. While there is still an expected lag when launching a game that isn't DRM free and tied to another launcher such as Steam, I noticed a slight performance bump compared to when I first bought the system. On the negative side though, the UI still leaves a lot to be desired and I wish that the background color change for the file you're currently hovering over wouldn't happen. As mentioned in a video by numerous other outlets, including one by Linus Tech Tips during their initial review of the project, this is just an annoying feature? It might have seemed cool at first, like having the instrumental music for your, the game that you're about to play going anytime you're on that page on your Steam Deck, but it gets annoying pretty quickly. Speaking of the Steam Deck, it's been over a year since I made my five must-dos for new Steam Deck owners. Maybe check that video out up here and get subscribed. Maybe I'll make an updated one in the near future. Who knows? Foreshadowing. Implementation of Armory Crate Quick Menu has been notably improved, and now when I need to adjust settings on the fly, things seem to work about 95% of the time. Obviously, some games will give you issues when you start changing screen resolution or refresh rate, but usually will catch up or just require a title restart. I've also noted less stuttering when switching control modes, something that I found to be really annoying in the past. So all in all, the UI and the Armory Crate experience has improved to almost a point of full Steam Deck levels of fluidity. Perhaps in another six months or so, we'll see near perfect implementation, or at least I hope. And some hopes do come true, such as the performance in games drastically improving. <laughs> So yes, performance in games seems to have vastly improved since I first started using the system last year. And now that I really understand the system and its strengths and weaknesses and how to squeeze out the optimum performance, whether I'm tethered to a wall or free to be wireless, what games I'm finding to be the most fun to play on the go with the Ally? Well, my honest answer is I'm using the RG Ally and my Steam Deck in tandem with one another. It's no secret that I generally prefer the Steam Deck for a variety of reasons mentioned in previous videos and this video, but you can check out some of those others by getting subscribed and looking at them up here and who knows maybe i'll be coming out with more videos up to date on that in the future who would guess however some games simply won't play on the steam deck and some games truly benefit from the increased frame rate and performance i can get from the ally. So what are they? In no specific order, I've been playing the finals, Halo Infinite, Minecraft, Fortnite, mostly with some other titles from time to time, but the finals has been my favorite experience on the go with the ally as the performance and controller feel right at home with an ultra fast paced title such as that. Being able to play a multiplayer game with near total organic environmental destruction and dozens of effects happening on screen all at once and play it well is not something I would have predicted just a few short years ago. And yet playing the finals on the ally might be my favorite way to play, like even over desktop. And for the other titles, I've played Halo Infinite quite a bit with my friends using the Ally and the slim font choice for menus in Halo definitely benefits from the Ally's 1080p screen. Meanwhile, games like Minecraft and Fortnite, and until very recently Goat Simulator, are only playable on proper Windows due to their anti-cheat functionality or server and platform distribution. So it's really my only option outside of lugging my gaming laptop around with me everywhere, which is fine, but it's just so heavy. Speaking of, it's been pretty amazing not needing to carry around a hefty Razer laptop when I have a really quick trips for work since I already carry so many other pieces of tech 
on the regular. If you'd be interested in seeing my different tech and camera bag recommendations, leave a comment down below so that I know if that's something you're even interested in and make sure to hit the like button so I know it's something I should consider for future videos. Speaking of consideration, yes, I'm who should buy the RG Ally over the Steam Deck or even the Lenovo Legion Go? Well, the answer is both simple and complicated. If you're currently debating between the Steam Deck and the RG Ally, I would consider two big factors, price and performance. Both of these systems come in at a similar price point with both going on sale somewhat frequently. The Ally definitely goes on sale more often at Best Buy than the Steam Deck does on Steam, but the Steam Deck has had hefty discounts in the past as well. While I firmly do not recommend the non-Z1 Extreme edition of the Ally, I do recommend the Z1 Extreme. In terms of performance, the Ally wipes the floor with the Steam Deck at 720p in terms of fluidity and performance, thanks to that higher refresh rate, not to mention the added benefit of VRR on the Ally. So if you're someone who likes to max out settings as much as you can, or who needs a high and consistent frame rate for multiplayer and fast-paced titles, then the Ally probably is your best bet. But what if you're in between the Lenovo Legion Go and the RG Ally. In general, I would still recommend the Ally over the Legion Go. So far, the Ally has received significantly more support than the Go, and the Legion Go has been marred with technical issues that have persisted much longer than either the Ally or the Steam Deck did, given the same amount of time since their launch for their respective hardware. In short, the Legion Go seems to be having some trouble breaking through in the market, even though it has some really great features like removable controller bars and a higher definition screen than both the Ally and the Steam Deck. Unfortunately, though, it uses almost the exact same performance metrics as the Z1 Extreme Ally, which causes those technical issues to, I just mentioned, to just be an experience killer, honestly. So in short, I'm at a point now where I can confidently recommend the Ally to those that view my channel. With the market improvements of the UI experience and the fluidity, the performance adjustments that have made games much more fun to play in my opinion, and the added benefit of still having a full-fledged copy of Windows running on the system, now is the best time since launch to pick up an ROG Ally. You'll see the system go on sale quite often at Best Buy, so while its regular price point is now somewhat justified, I generally would recommend waiting for it to go on sale since you've already waited this long. There's no need to rush things and since you're watching this video you probably haven't thus far. Take your time with your purchases. I know not everybody has the means or the ability to own multiple platforms or systems and I hope that my videos are a way for you to weigh the options before making uh, an informed decision purchase. At the end of the day whichever one you go with I'm hopeful that you'll have a great time gaming on the go and that's what it's all about. It's been a minute since I made a video and honestly I was going through this weird time in my personal life adjusting to some new personal healthcare routines as well as some social aspects of my personal life, but I'm thankful to be back making videos and hope to expand the channel beyond just talking about the Steam Deck and the Ally and these handheld consoles. I'd love to incorporate more game-centric content or even talk about desktops and laptops, so any engagement you have in the comments down below that touches upon those subjects would be greatly appreciated because it lets me know what to make in the future. I'm Professor Tech and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to try out trymintmobile.com forward slash tech or click the link in the description down below. And I hope you have an absolutely amazing week. Bye. Leave. You've been here too long. Go go try the Mint Mobile thing. If, if you're still here and you're at the end of the video and you're just hanging out because you like the, the, the da, 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 you like the music, um, one, I appreciate you. That's That song is a banger. Anyway, I appreciate you guys. I'll see you at some point, ideally within two weeks.